Hello everyone, welcome to this video on mean shift clustering by IntelliPack. Clustering is an unsupervised machine learning technique that aims to group data samples into different groups based on their similarities. It is mostly used in use cases where the target has not been provided and ML algorithm has to make decision based on the characteristics or features that is available in the dataset. So through this video, we are going to focus on one of the types of clustering known as mean shift clustering. We will understand the basic mathematical intuition behind it and towards the end we will also implement it by using scikit-learn library. But before we begin, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you won't miss any updates coming from our site. Now let's see our agenda for today's video. We will start with what is mean shift clustering. Then we will see how mean shift clustering works. After that, we will look into advantages and disadvantages of mean shift clustering. Later on, we will be covering applications of mean shift clustering. And lastly, we will be look into implementations of mean shift clustering. And with this, we will conclude today's video on mean shift clustering. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda for today's video. Okay guys, now let's first start with what is mean shift clustering. So mean shift clustering is nothing but it is a non-parametric clustering algorithm that aims to discover blobs or a dense region in a data set or if i have to say it in another words in this algorithm every data point shifts to its regional mean which will move that data points towards the nearest clusters and this process continues until the data point converge to a stable locations representing the centers of distinct clusters and also you are not required to specify the number of clusters beforehand which makes it an adaptive approach to data exploration now let's understand this with a simple example so let's imagine you have a bunch of scattered marbles on a table right and here mean shift clustering would be like gently pushing each marble towards the nearest group of marbles until they all settle into distinct clusters of marbles. And yes, this iterative process of shifting towards the mean is what gives the algorithm its name mean shift clustering. Okay, now let's proceed with this example and understand it better. So here, each of these scattered marbles represents the data points, which is a single observation or a measurement in a data set, right? And now, these are the clusters that will form in this data set. So clusters basically form where a group of data points share similar characteristics or if these data points were located very close together in their featured space. Here, clusters were formed as more data points were close together in that particular area. Now, these are the centroids of the clusters that were formed here which represents the average location in that feature space. And now, these marbles search out for the nearest group of marbles and then move to that nearest group of marbles. And this iterative process keeps on going until all the marbles go inside their nearest group of marbles. And a cluster formation is done. So we have seen the shifting of marbles to their nearest group of marbles, right? So the shifting of marbles, or if I say shifting of these data points is what done by kernel density estimation or KDE method. Now let us see what is that. Kernel density estimation or KDE. So as I said, it is a method for estimating the underlying distribution of a set of data points and basically this would help you draw a continuous line that represents the density of those dots showing where they are more likely to appear. The mean shift clustering algorithm is based on the concept of this kernel density estimation. So as you can see this figure, suppose a data point of value x equals to 1 is somewhat here, right? If that data point is here, the kernel density estimation method will push that data point to this peak because this 
is the nearest peak to this data point. And if another data point of value x equals to let's say 3 and that data point will come here in this graph right and these data points of value x equals to 3 comes in this place of the graph then kernel density estimation method will push the data points towards this peak as you can see here the second peak because this is the nearest peak to that data point right so that's how this kernel density estimation method works. Now let us see how does mean shift clustering works. And here we are going to see the algorithm behind mean shift clustering. Okay now the mean shift clustering algorithm comprises of the following steps. First step is initialization. We start with the data points assigned to a cluster and then the second step is node seeking so here for each data point we will calculate the mean shift vector which points towards the densest region of the points in its surrounding area so the mean shift vector is computed as the weighted average of the offsets between the current data point and all other data points within a specified bandwidth and coming to the third step, it is update centroids. So in this step, we will effectively shift the data point towards denser regions on the data space. So we will move each data point along its mean shift vector. Coming to the fourth step, it is iteration. In this step, we have to repeat step number two and three until convergence, which will occur where no data points move significantly along its mean shift vector. So, convergence typically indicates that data points have reached the local maxima of the density function representing the clusters in the data. And coming to the last step, which is cluster formation. So, here we will group data points into clusters based on their final locations. Points that end up at the same location belong to the same cluster. So as you can look at the image on the right side, how first the data points is initialized and then those data points keep on iterating and centroids get updated, right? And once the iteration gets completed, they gets converged. Find the centers and finally clusters get formed. Now let us see what are the advantages of mean shift clustering algorithm. So the first advantage is the mean shift algorithm has only one parameter which determines the number of clusters. Second, there is no issue of local maxima and assumptions of total clusters. And the third advantage is it also models the complex shaped clusters. Now let us see the disadvantages of mean shift clustering algorithm. So the first disadvantage is the mean shift algorithm doesn't work in case of high dimensions where clusters change unexpectedly. Second, we cannot have a direct control over the number of clusters. Now let us see some of the applications of mean shift clustering algorithm. So mean shift clustering algorithm finds application in various domains including image segmentation where the main focus is on identifying distinct objects in images. Second, user segmentation where the main focus is on grouping users based on their behavior or preferences. And another application is anomaly detection where the main focus is on detecting unusual data points that deviate from the majority. Okay, now we will see the implementation of mean shift clustering algorithm. Now let us see the implementation part of mean shift clustering. But before that, first open a Jupyter Notebook or Google Collab Notebook where we will be going to do the implementation. So I am using Google Collab Notebook for that. So let me just open that. Okay, we have to open the new notebook here. So if you are using Jupyter Notebook, 
do the same procedure just open a new notebook in that Jupyter okay so once you open new notebook let's first of all import all of the necessary libraries that we need for working with data manipulation clustering and data visualization so let us import first numpy so let us import that first import numpy as np and second we have to import pandas so let us import that import pandas as pd and after that let us import mean ship from the scikit library so for that we have to write from scikit and yes please make sure that before you import all of these prerequisites all of the packages were already installed in your local system or uh, if you're working on Jupyter notebook okay let us import mean shift so for that uh, we are writing import sklearn dot cluster and then import sorry mean shift and then we have to import make blobs so let's import that in from sklearn dot data sets import make underscore blobs and then let us import matplotlib for the visualization purpose Let's import that mat plot lib dot pi plot right and lastly we are going to import access 3D. So this was also we are importing for the visualization. So let's import that from mpl underscore toolkits dot mplot 3d so from here we are going to import access 3d okay let's access 3d right okay now first of all run all of this and we'll see whether it will running successfully or not it may be a drop no drop I go I don't know okay so this part is successful this means we have successfully imported all of these libraries and our prerequisites that are needed for the implementation part so let's go further now and now let's define a list of coordinates that we will be using to generate raw data for clustering right so for that let's write coordinates equals to we have to give coordinates here so we have to pass three coordinates because we are going to create here 3d plot so that's why we are passing three values for x y and z right so let's pass the three values so i am giving this and just a random values so that we can create a raw data right and just uh, rather than creating here a raw data from your own you can also import any data sets if you have one so let me give another 
5, 10, and 13, right? And now let's generate 150 data points using the make block function from the scikit-learn data sets that we have imported here, you can see. And we will also make the data points centered around the coordinates that we will define earlier and have a cluster standard deviation of 0 0.6. So we'll just write code for that. Close to make underscore blobs. And here we will pass n samples equals to we are giving 150 here. And then centers equal to coordinates and then cluster standard deviation that I have said you we are passing here 0 0.6 height okay, now I'll just run this and we'll see if there is any error or not okay so this complete part is executed successfully. So now let's move on further. Okay, so as we have created our raw sample data points, let's first visualize that. So for that, just write some line of code, data underscore figure equals to plot dot figure. So we are basically plotting our figure here. And first of all, we have to pass the figure size here. So let us pass the figure size. Let's pass 10 comma 8. And then let's say ax equals to data underscore figure. And then add underscore subplot. And we will pass here triple one comma and projection so we want to plot a 3d plot here so in projection we will give 3d here right sorry it's 3d and then ax scatter let's say X. Would see this cell and don't be it sign and make and zero and then X colon one here and then X colon two. And then we will add marker. Oh, let's give over here. And then we will give color for that marker. Oh, let me give it this. Let me give that purple. Right. And then we will plot that. Plot dot show. Sure. Right. Okay. So it should be PLT, not plot. Right. So let's run this and see if we get our 3D plot or not. Okay, there is one error. That is AX scatter. Okay. Uh, I have given here capital X. Uh, let us give that normal small x and see that. Let's run it again. Okay, there is still an adder which shows in line number three. It's attribute error. Let's see that. Okay, so it's color not UR. Now let's run it again. Okay, now you can see our 3D plot and a raw or I can say our raw sample data points that we have generated here, right? 
now let us move forward and start with our main shift clustering part right for that first of all what we need to do is import one library that is estimate bandwidth so let us import that so we have to import that from sklearn dot cluster and then import estimate bandwidth width right okay there is a spelling mistake here sklearn dot cluster import sorry for that mistake here it should be from sklearn dot cluster import estimate bandwidth right and after that just give bandwidth width equals to estimate underscore bandwidth and here we will pass x comma we will set our quantile value quantile value to 0 0.2 here and then we will pass number of samples so for that we will write an underscore sample and underscore samples equals to 500 right now let's execute this part okay, there is an error estimate bandwidth what's the error type error sorry there is a spelling mistake for this quantile now let's run it again okay now it successfully executed now let's move forward and we'll create mean shift clustering object and fit it to the data so for that first of all we will write msc equals to to mean shift and then we will give bandwidth equals to bandwidth and then we will pass bin seeding equals to true right okay now let us write here msc dot fit and we will pass here x sorry now we will write cluster underscore centers equals to msc dot cluster underscore centers centers underscore and then we will pass here labels equals to msc dot labels underscore and then we will give here cluster underscore label equals to we will give np dot unique here and we will pass labels right now we will give n clusters here equals to we will pass the length that is cluster underscore label so we are going to pass this one cluster label that we have created here so length equal we will passing length cluster label right 
then just right here and plus dos and plus dos okay we are done with it now now let's try to run this and we'll see okay so it executed successfully and given output 3 right so this is the number of clusters that will form in this raw data that we have created so let's try to plot that three clusters that are going to form in this raw data so let's plot that in this graph so for that let's write msc figure equals to plot dot figure right and first of all we have to pass the figure size figure size here equals to I'm passing the same value that I have passed above 10 comma 8 then axa equals to msc underscore figure dot add subplot so we will add this subplot here and we will pass the same value that we have passed above then projection equals to it's 3d projection 3d and then ax dot scatter it pass here cluster underscore centers right and then we'll give colon zero and then let's write cluster underscore cluster centers and let's pass the coordinate and one Cluster Centos Call in two. Now let's add the marker. That will be O and give it color. So for this. I will give green color and we pass size equals to 300 we have to also pass line width here it will be 5 and the z order which will be 10 here right so let me remove this okay and let me give you a plot dot title and we will write here estimated number of clusters right and here we will pass the value of this n underscore clusters so we will pass this value here and we will write percent n underscore n clusters right lastly we will plot that Okay, now let's execute all of this and we'll see how our three clusters that we are getting here, we are getting here three. So how these three clusters are plotted in our 3D plot. Okay, there is an error. 
So let me check that first. So there is an invalid syntax error. So okay, let me check that first. Okay, so let me change this. So let me change this first. So I think it's because of that only. Okay. Yeah, who? Now let's try to run that again. Okay. So now this part is also executed successfully. So as you can see here, the data points and their cluster centers that is green in color, right? So this green color, as you can see here, here and here, these are the cluster centers so that were created with the help of mean shift clustering, right? So that's how we can implement mean shift clustering to any raw data set. So here I have created a raw data from my own. So in that place, you can also import any data set if you have one and rest, the procedure will be same as we have done here, right? So that's all we have for this video. I hope you got a good understanding about what mean shift clustering is and how to implement it to a raw data sets. Thank you for staying with us till the end. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow mates. And also make sure to subscribe to our Intellipet YouTube channel so that you won't miss any updates coming from our site. Just a quick info guys, Intellipath offers machine learning course in collaboration with IIDM Pravartak. Through this course, you will learn various algorithms and machine learning techniques such as supervised, unsupervised learning, natural language processing and much more from the IIT Madras faculty and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel whose link is given below in the description. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in the field of machine learning.